everybody, and welcome back to a Multiplex on Movie Melee. I am your host, Caleb Boatman. Almost slipped up there. Still haven't met, gotten it wrong yet. Woot, woot, woot. Well, we've got another match in the tournament. It's a one seed versus the 32 seed. It is Pace and Johnson going up against Brandon Dunlap. So this should be a fun matchup. We'll start off by bringing in Brandon. Brandon, uh, we've been seeing a little bit more of you lately, and that always makes me happy. How are you feeling? Thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm doing good, man. Doing good. Recently moved, so I'm in like a new environment, new job, new a lot of things. Uh, but apparently some things never change because I'm up against the number one seed in another tournament again. <laughs> that, that, it's at least nice that there's some constants, though. Right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, good luck to you, Brandon. Thank and you, thank you. We'll bring in Payson and his manager, Holtzman. Payson, you're the one seed. This is the first time you've ever had that honor. How are you feeling going into this? Uh, I'm uh, feeling, yeah, I guess I'm speaking on Payson's behalf. Um, historically, Payson has had a decently high seed in the tournament. And then in round two, he goes up against David Nishimoto basically every time. And David's great. And there's a reason that Payson doesn't always win that. And there's a reason they're an amazing team. as because David is the perfect yin to Payson's yang. Um, Brandon is a very nice guy. He is not that yin or that yang. He is, he is a third entirely different thing. Uh, but no, Payson, especially in this last season, has proven himself as one of the most dominant and one of the top singles players we've seen in a long time. Fought his way through just a regular picture to get to the title. Uh, put up a hell of a match against Barr for it. Um, yeah, I think obviously it's round one of a tournament and anything can happen. But I think that Payson's got this. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Holtzman, and we're going to get started with round one. Round one's going to... Okay, we can get started with your first question in round one. Dylan's here also. Say hi, Dylan. <laughs> hi, Dylan. Hi, <laughs> Dylan. Okay, we're going to get started with your first question in the category of comedy. What is Bruce's job in Bruce Almighty? If you had to have, like, an adjective after your name, like, you know, Bruce Almighty, what would it be? Dylan what? Mediocre. Still in the mediocre, probably. Five, four, <laughs> two, one. Pens down. Uh, let's go to Payson. He's a news reporter. And Brandon. He is a news reporter. Both correct. As we get to your next question, Dylan. Yep, which comes in the category of Westerns. 1960s The Magnificent Seven predominantly takes place in what country? You know, you may have heard of Bruce Almighty, but have you heard of Boat Anxiety? Nice. That's good. That's good. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's go to Brandon. Probably a classic case of overthinking, but I put Mexico. And Payson. Mexico? Mexico is correct. Oh, okay. <laughs> As we get to your third question, category is 70s. Who directed Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore? Where does Alice live, is the question. That is a very good question. I will say I was caught off guard by how different Payson sounds with the new webcam. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, let's go to Payson. Martin Scorsese. And Brandon. I don't have it. I knew it was somebody like that. Martin Scorsese is correct as we get into your fourth question. Yeah, which comes in the category of coming of age slash teen. Thomas Hayden Church, Amanda Bynes, and Stanley Tucci have roles in what film? Did you ever watch The Amanda Show? A little bit, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I did too. Good show. Dancing Come lobsters. On, three, two, one. <laughs> Bring in the dancing lobsters. Remember that when that was my sign off? Oh, good times. Let's go. To I remember Brandon. that. That's that's old school. Let's go to Brandon. <laughs> Easy A. And Payson. Easy A. 
That is correct. Ah, uh, dude, you're making me feel older, Boatman. Thank you. That's fair. <laughs> Your next question comes in the category of actors and actresses. Who appears in MASH, A Time to Kill, and Ordinary People? So last time MASH was brought up in a match, uh, we talked about mashed potatoes. Do you believe mashed potatoes is the best form of potato? Twice baked potatoes. Five. Four. That's fair. Yeah. One. Pens down. Let's go to Brandon. I don't have it. And Payson. Almost overthought it. Donald Sutherland. Donald Sutherland is correct. As we get to your next question, <coughs> Excuse me. which I believe is Dylan's. Or no, it's mine. Or it's yes, it's yours. It's Sorry, I'm stupid. That's fine. Your next question comes in the category of action slash adventure. In sudden death, Darren has to fight a group of terrorists during a game of what kind of sport? It's a very specific reason I know this. It's fair. I don't like sports. What? Five. Four. Dang, dude. Three, two, one, pens down. Let's go to Brandon. Never seen it. Don't have it. And Payson. A certain movie melee player was an extra in this film, hockey. Wait, who? Uh, Kirk. It's Pittsburgh. I didn't actually know that Kirk was an extra in that movie. Yeah. I actually did not That's know that. That's really cool, actually. <laughs> hockey is correct. Oh, yeah. Hockey's correct, by the way. But I... Sorry, I got sidetracked by not knowing Kirk was in sudden death. Anyway, your penultimate question in the category of sci-fi fantasy. In Labyrinth, what kind of fruit does Jareth tell Hoggle to give Sarah in order to make her fall into a trance? So the reason I was like, I hate sports, beyond just me hating sports is, like, Iowa is right now really ticked off about the basketball thing that happened yesterday. Five, four, three, two, one, pens down. And I'm sick of hearing about it! Let's go to Payson. How could you peach for hours? And Brandon. I'm wrong. I said apple. Peach is correct, but please <laughs> never do that again. <laughs> I will. I am not afraid to take away points for that. Fair, fair. <laughs> that, was gen- that was genuinely creepy. All so right. Your eighth and final question in this round, and if I believe if Payson gets this right, he will have a perfect round. That is correct. Yes. Comes in the category of scores and soundtracks. Name one of the two artists that recorded the song "Guns Go Bang" for the 2021 film "The Harder They Fall." I don't want to say too much, but I love this song. It's so good. <laughs> this movie rules. Oh, that yeah. Right. I wasn't crazy about it the first time I saw it, and then I watched it like twice in the same year, like after that, and I loved it. <laughs> One. Pens down. I haven't rewatched it, but I want to. Brandon? I've never seen the movie. It just takes out in the dark with Billy Eilish. And Payson. Kid Cuddy? That is correct. <laughs> good job, Payson. Thank you. And so now, Payson, we will give you your bonus question. You do not need to write this on a whiteboard. This will be to you and you only. In what 70s film will you find an old vaudeville duo called Lewis and Clark? Sunshine, please. That is correct for one point. Nice. Thank you. So oh, now I have Payson at nine, Brandon at three. Is that what you have, Dylan? That is what I have, yes. Okay, so we are going to go to round number two. Round two is going to work like this. Each competitor is going to get a chance to spin the wheel. If they like what they spin, they can keep it. If they don't, they can spin again, but then they are stuck with it. They're going to get five questions into whatever category they get. You get it right, two points, multiple choice, one point, you get it wrong. Other player is going to get a chance for the steal. Categories on our lovely wheel tonight are Anna Kendrick. The Oscars, crime, directors, comic book movies, recent releases, romance, the 1980s, and as always, spinners and opponents' choice. So, Payson, we will bring in your manager. Would you like to spin first or defer to Brandon? So I'm going to leave this up to you. I want your advice. Do you think I should not play it by the book and just go first? I I don't hate it as a concept. I think, I think if that's something you want to do, you're – 
on a solid roll right now. I think we can keep it going if we wanted to and see if we can take something off the board for him. You know what? Let's do it. Okay. okay. I want to spin first. Payson, this is your spin. And you land on 1980s. Would you like to keep that or spin again? We talked about it earlier. I think we want to stick with the plan. You can probably spin one more time. Yeah, yeah we'll spin again. Uh, okay. This is the category you are going to be stuck with. And you land on spinner's choice. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I say, why don't I we keep... leave Oscars on there for him. I was going to say, let's leave Oscars on there. I'm thinking directors, honestly. I like that as a choice. Okay. I will yeah. take directors. Okay. Thank you, Thank you. And Dylan, would you like to give Pace and his questions in the category of directors? Yeah, absolutely. So, Payson, your first question in the category of directors. What was the last film directed by Harold Ramis? Five. Multiple choice. Okay. Your options are A, Fred Claus, B, The Heartbreak Kid, C, Year One, or D, drill bit Taylor. You take more time, year one. That is correct for one point. Yeah. Next question. Who directed Scrooged? Richard Donner. That is correct for two points. Your third question. George Cukor, William A. Wellman, and Bradley Cooper all directed films with what title? A Star is Born. That is correct for two points. So your penultimate question. Carol Reed directed what 1949 thriller? Oh, 49. Four, three, I'll, I'll use two. one read. Okay, so your question again. Carol Reed directed what 1949 thriller? I don't think he would know the other one, so I'm going to say The Third Man. That is correct for two points. Now your final question in this category. Who directed Jumanji, The Rocketeer, and October Sky? Joe John Stin. That is correct for two more points. So coming out of that round, Payson is at 18, Brandon at three. Is that what you have, Dylan? That is what I have, yes. Okay, so oh, Brandon, you need to get at least five points here in order to stay in the game. Okay. So Brandon, this is your spin. And you land on crime. Would you like to keep that or spin again? Um, let's see. I don't hate it, but let's go ahead and spin one more time. Okay, this is the category you are stuck <laughs> with. And you land in the category of the Oscars. So, Brandon, <laughs> I will give you your questions in the category of Oscars. Beckett. Midnight Cowboy and Elmer Gantry won what Oscar? Uh, uh, best picture. That is incorrect. Payson for the two point steal. Best adapted screenplay? That is correct for two points. Okay, your next question in the category of the Oscars. Who won Best Supporting Actress for films released in 1971? Uh, multiple choice, please. Multiple choice options are A, Eileen Heckart, B, Ellen Burstyn, C, Helen Hayes, D, Cloris Leachman. Uh, Ellen Burstyn. 
That is incorrect. Payson for the one point steal. Your options are A, Eileen Heckhart, B, Ellen Burstyn, C, Helen Hayes, D, Cloris Leachman. Cloris Leachman. That is correct for the one point steal. Uh, and I do believe that that is a knockout. So, and your <laughs> winner by way of a knockout, Payson, the Cinemaster Johnson. The correct answer was Cloris Leachman. So we're going to go to post-match interviews, starting with Brandon. Brandon, uh, you weren't able to pull off the victory. <laughs> Wheel didn't go your way. Not not much you can do from that. But how are you feeling? No, that was that was that was painful. I I, I know Payson knows his stuff. I've seen him play. I've watched him in other shows. I knew it was going to be an uphill battle. I thought I would do a little bit better than that, but like you said, the wheel wasn't in my favor. I bear no ill will. I wish him the best of luck in the rest of the tournament. And I'll be happy to come back one day, if you'll have me. <laughs> we will have you again, Brandon. <laughs> and now we'll go over to our winner tonight, Payson. Payson, uh, you got the W. Uh, first, you win in this round of the tournament. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling really, really great. And I'll be honest, this was a big confidence booster. Uh, I don't want to take anything away from Brandon. He's a very good player, but I want to do well in this tournament. I want to show that this reputation I feel like I've gathered is earned and not correct. I think putting up, I believe a perfect game, uh, I think reflects that. Yeah, no, I was going to point out uh, you played a perfect game, not including go checking down to multiple choice, but that's still a perfect game. Um, so, yeah, that impressive run from you. Uh, we don't know exactly who you're going to be playing next, but uh, who do you hope comes down that pipeline? Honestly, uh, I would be okay with playing anyone. I hope to play David in this tournament. I hope to play Cameron Holtzman. I hope to play uh, some other people. Uh, but honestly, I just have one goal this year, like right now, and that is make it to round three. I've never made it to round three of the tournament, and that is my short-term goals. We'll talk about everything else after that. That is fair. Well, thank you, Payson. Thank you, Holzman. Dylan, uh, final thoughts on the match? Yeah, just a crazy performance from Payson there, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we said perfect game. Uh, yeah, feel bad for Brandon. It's like a pretty – insurmountable task i feel like when you're going up against someone who's playing that well and they also happen to spin spinner's choice and then you land on their other strength like their main strength so pretty tough tough luck for him but uh, i know we'll see him back and he'll yeah like yeah. that's the thing is the oscars questions were pace and strengths those were strength level uh so that's always going to be even more of an uphill battle but uh brandon hung in there but pace and just played dominantly tonight uh, so thank you everyone at home for watching. Thank you to Payson. Thank you to Brandon. Thank you to Dylan. Thank you to Holstman for managing. Thank you to everyone for watching. I'm Caleb Bolton. This is Multiplex Movie Melee, and we will see you later. Goodbye. Goodbye. Storm in the castle. Think it'll like? If it takes a Bye.